All right, great. Um, so today um, I'm going to share our, our firm journey of this digital transformation. Um, once again, thanks for the host and also thanks for Exabytes for to share our journey. So um, personally, I started Law and Partners um, about 12 years ago. Um, so um, I'm apart from law, um, digital and also IT is also part of my interest. So that's why I'm also the uh, Innovation and Future of Law Committee member of the Bar Council. And also personally, I've also invested in some of the tech company. Um, so digital is always uh, something that I think is a way to go. Um, so allow me to share um, about digital transformation in the um, professional firm or law firm. But before that, how many of you here are from a law firm? Uh, can I see a, um, can you type uh, you are from a law firm? If let's say uh, you're from a law firm or if you are from an accounting firm, um, company secretary firm, that just type in the chat room. So I think digital transformation is quite wide. Um, I would broadly categorize it into a few categories. First, as a tool um, for process and operation enhancement. And then secondly, for better decision-making for branding and marketing. So for branding and marketing, um, a lot of people are talking about marketing, online presence, e-commerce, and all this. I think uh, there are many gurus out there, and a lot of people has, um, has got a uh, Marketing. I think that it's always a focus when people talk about it. Um, but today I'm going, to be, I'm going to share about branding and marketing digitally, but my focus is more on the um, process and operation enhancement. Uh, it's where a lot of time the entrepreneurs or of the SMEs will tend to forget as a starting point. So I, I think everyone knows that uh, business you have to do marketing and branding. So digital marketing, online presence, website building, I, I think it's not an issue. But the main issue uh, when we try to scale or when we try to run an operation is the digital, digi digital automation on this part, HR and accounting. Um, so, uh, and also the uh, product, production automation. So these tools, I, I feel that it will be the um, starting point for most company. So for example, for accounting, apart from Excel, um, are you guys using any uh, software to do it? So for HR and pay, questions that um, I, I need you to, I mean, I, I, I encourage everyone and all entrepreneurs to think. So as the, as the organization growth, another important angle that we look into digital optimization or digital automation is the, to enable better decision-making. So um, in terms of the uh, company that you have, that you built, do you have a good database where it will allow you to perform analytics? So probably big data is a bit too far for uh, SME uh, as a beginning, but the um, data collections and also um, information about your own organization uh, is a very important thing that I, I feel that um, uh, we, have to, we have to focus on. Yeah. So what's the current adoption rate? of uh, digital, um, you know, uh, digitalization among the profession. So I'd like to share um, two to three years ago, um, you'll be surprised that I will still see emails from law firms uh, bearing the uh, email address of jaring, pc .jaring my. <laughs> So this is how dinosaur uh, Malaysia's law firm is. And a lot of time, um, uh, some of the uh, older generation law firm, they are um, not so receptive as to digital. That, um, legal profession is an old profession, and uh, but we are moving slowly towards the uh, digitalization process. And I think uh, what actually trigger us more and motivate us more is the triggering point was sometime back then in the GST time. So when everyone forced to do a lot of accounting uh, uh, calculation for GST and everyone are, sh are pushed uh, towards adopting uh, accounting software. But still some of the law firms that are still using the manual way uh, mindset that you must enforce it. So, so when, when we have the determination, so maybe uh, IT is not a forte. So, but you know that in the current business world, in the current 
business challenge, the, you need to have IT. So if you can't do it, if you don't have the ability, then it's important that you, you know, in your company structure, bring in experts, bring in the experts partner who are good in IT, then work together. Otherwise, um, the, the business will become more and more challenging, right? So this is the first uh, challenge that I see. Start from the boss themselves, the self-awareness, de determination, and the team member. Now, second problem, I think, a lot of time before I reach the staff resistance is the choice of software and solution. So I, I feel that we are all flooded with uh, too many software out there. So yes, we know that digitalization is very important, extremely important. So what is the software that we need to use? So what is the solution? Um, so there's no hard and fast rule. Every profession or every business or every organization will need different kinds of software to achieve a different goal or uh, get different solutions. So the best thing is to try out, to have demo with all of them. Um, I remember when I first started, I actually get, um, I think all the software providers to share with me the, uh, their software features and whatnot. So, and then eventually, then you choose the best one, maybe in terms of cost, maybe in terms of features, then you can kickstart. And yes, it may be costly in terms of the software, um, at the beginning, but let me assure you that it will be a good investment. Yeah, so it's a good to go thing. Now, the third thing, after you have um, get the software and a lot of people and a lot of entrepreneurs thought that, oh, their problem is done or they have considered themselves as fully digitalized. Um, but the sad reality is that um, it's not, right? Having a software itself or buying a software or purchasing a software or subscribing to a software itself doesn't mean that you are already completed your digitalization process is just the very, very beginning of it. Because once you have got the software in, you have another bigger problem, the user's problem, the staff resistance. So if your staff don't use it, or your staff refuse to use it, or if your staff find it not user-friendly, you won't be getting um, the benefits of the features that you have, or it was sold to you during the software presentation. So you must be able to resolve the issues of staff resistance. So the best way to resolve it is by um, um, having to curb this, I think the important thing is that the boss themselves or the management themselves has to go through the software on their own and then walk through with the staff step-by-step step on each minor problem or minor bug they're facing. So this is my uh, sharing. And uh, in terms of journey, um, the, I would like to share about the uh, choice of software they have. Um, we, the choice of software problem is that at times you have too many software, um, each software is dedicated or is designed to serve to solve certain problem, but when you have too many software, um, the software that you know you have to have too many standalone different software, each of these software doesn't speak to each other, because um, you probably buy a HR software from uh, supplier A, you buy an accounting software from supplier B, you buy a CRM software from supplier C, then you buy another um, automation software from supplier D, so. When this four software doesn't speak to each other, the challenge of the boss will face is that one matter or one, one information or one data, you have to key in into four different software in order to enjoy the features of it. So I suppose at the um, some time of your implementation of a digitalization, this will be one problem that you face. And this is also one of the headache and one of the greatest staff resistance, why they are not using the software they're proposing despite whatever features that were sold to you when you're buying the time. So um, I, I, we, have been, we have been through this stage like any other professional firm. And uh, eventually, I think probably eight years ago, I had made a decision that uh, we can't have too many software because the software doesn't speak to each other. So what we did was actually um, we built our own software for our own internal use. For now, I think I spent about more than 1 million and more than eight years or nine years just to build this software. So um, some of the software features I can share with you, um, if let's say you're running a professional firm, maybe this will be something that's important to you, is um, 
document merging. So for law firm, it's very important uh, to have document merging function because a lot of time um, the documents like you know, uh, law is about signing agreement, right? So when the lawyer pass you a stack of agreement, so how do we make sure that um, the information in the whole stack of agreement is all correct and accurate? So then we have to use the software uh, for merging purposes. So let's say, for example, if you, if you sign a sales and purchase agreement, you click one button, you type in the purchaser's name and you type in the seller's name once, then the whole stack of documents will be created and generated. Yeah. And secondly, we have also built our own software as to, uh, to, to incorporate a career system element. Um, how I got this idea is because, uh, you know, in law firm, day in, day out, we have to send documents out. Every day, there are many documents going out and uh, there are a lot of documents coming in. So, and one day I sit at the sofa at the reception and notice that why um, the career company like Lala Move or why the uh, ABX Express, why GDEX, they all are so good and so efficient in the delivery, but our own dispatch boy are not able to deliver it. So then it triggers me to think that we should have a module or we have a feature just like a career company so that we can monitor the documents in and outflow. And uh, also we have built a status update system. We need to know uh, each of the status updates for all the files that we handle. So for some of you here who runs a, a firm or whatnot, an al alternative to the status update system is Trello. Probably Trello is also one uh, good features. It's just that uh, if you have too many different software like Trello and others, then maybe some of the software don't speak to each other. So eventually you have to stick to one. So it's one problem. And other features that we have um, to the extent that we have an internal booking system. We have a booking system for a meeting room because um, many clients in and out. So we need to have a booking system. And uh, we have our own CRM software. Um, basically, I went to Salesforce. I, I, I used their demo. I tried to find out their features. And we incorporate some of the elements inside. Some of the elements under Salesforce are really, really good and really, really powerful. And uh, we have also built a, another features for referral systems. Um, so this referral systems allows us to work with a lot of a, a websites owner or a lot of business owners, um, uh, which I'm going to share later how these features work. And uh, lastly, um, not lastly, I think another function that we have that we build on our own is like a lead management system. Something like Pipedrive, if you want to have a subscription system, Pipedrive is quite good, uh, but probably is costly, uh, but it will allow you to see the deal of the flow, the flow of the deal, which is very important to how the whole funnel, the whole funnel from the potential client up to your, to, to, to become a client. So, so we have also lock in and have a demo on it and then we learn and see the features inside and then incorporate into our own, our own software. So the reference systems that we have uh, is something like that. Um, maybe we have, uh, we have friends or uh, business partners or other uh, websites owner, they have their own website. Um, then uh, the traditional way is that they, will, they, they have friends or people who need a lot of legal services or legal questions, they will throw to us through WhatsApp. Um, but the thing is when they WhatsApp to us, then it's very difficult for us to trace and uh, very difficult for us to update the status of the lead. So instead of having uh, in a manual way, what we do is that we build uh, another system for lead management system. So in our um, partners or associates website or friends website, they'll, they'll have a button to ask, uh, to ask for legal questions. And then once the legal question is asked, it will be channeled into our lead management portal. And then eventually the lead management portal will have a system um, that will be able to monitor the lawyers who are attending the lead. At the same time, we'll be able to churn out a reporting and a database to work back to the website owner. So this is one of the features that we use to acquire clients. So I think um, it's also quite helpful for any of you who try to build one. So build on their own. You can uh, work together um, as a team, or you can also research about other softwares that are available out there in the market. Some of them are free, some of them are uh, good to use, but I, um, I, I'm going to walk through a um, few of them with you over here. So um, Dropbox is for cloud, and then Canva is for your design. So it allows you to design your brochures or some of the materials easily and digitally for you to post in Facebook. All these are good investments. Yeah. Um, accounting functions, I think uh, you have to buy accounting software. If not, at least learn about pivot table in Excel. I think it's very helpful 
for the entrepreneurs. All right, so I'm given 30 minutes to share, but there are many things to share. So I'm gonna end here. So um, if there's any questions uh, before we, I think there's some Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. This is uh, my PA's number as well as my personal email. So I'm gonna pass back the floor to the host and uh, let's see if there's any Q&A, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andy. Uh, we can't even have any questions for now, but you guys, if, for those of you who have been tuning in, if you do have questions, just go ahead and leave them in the Q&A, you know, and we'll just beat them out for you. In the meantime, we can chat while we wait. We actually have, uh, I think, about a great period, about five minutes. So on a more personal level, uh, Dr. Andy, how has the whole pandemic been treating you? Oh, I can't Please. actually hear you. Say that again. No, I can't hear you, but I see you, you know, your mouth moving though. Uh, okay. Hold on. Uh, okay, now I can hear you. Yeah. You can hear me? Can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So I think the pandemic is a good opportunity for us to um, take some time to think about um, how do we move forward for our business, uh, for ourselves in terms of life goal and whatnot. Uh, the pandemic served me very well. Um, in fact, uh, we are growing despite the pandemic. But I, I, I hope, I, I think that this is a good opportunity for us to realign our priority or have a peace of mind to plan for the businesses and also um, review uh, what we have done before, um, whether or not it's on the right track. And I noticed that there are many professional firms out there that um, actually grab this opportunity during the pandemic. I think it, it works very well. Um, they start to um, look into this digital aspect of uh, practicing as a law firm or as a lawyer. Uh, or a professional accounting firm and whatnot. So um, yeah, and it's not going to end soon, the way I see it. <laughs> so too bad, but if you ever there's a threat or there's a problem, I think it's an opportunity for every one of us. I see that's very good advice, you know, and like you said, like, this pandemic isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's probably going to be around for a few years. Now, being, you know, such an established figure in uh, your community uh, and of course your line of work, you know, can you give us some advice? Because failure is something that we have to deal with from time to time, like it or not, you know. Uh, success is not measured, you know, it's not linear, that, that's for sure. So can you give us three tips on how to deal with failure? I think, I think the how to deal with failures mostly starts with, uh, uh, again, back to your self-awareness and also uh, your self-determination. So uh, first of all, are you aware that there is a, um, a problem Okay, whether or not you have the determination to and the courage to really go go down to actually um, find out the problems of your own, um, and then after that have the courage to um, find solutions. Right, a lot of time people whenever there's a failure they will try to blame each other. They will try to blame others, pinpoint others instead of looking back to themselves. So I feel that um, the same thing goes goes back looking to ourselves. Yeah, so. Everything starts from ourselves. Lah. Just like even for the digital transformation, it all starts from the entrepreneur, entrepreneur themselves. If let's say the boss, the bosses don't really um, take this as a highest priority, so um, you will never reach there. Yeah, you will never reach there. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. You were saying? Yeah, I was saying that the uh, um, digital transformation, there are many aspects. So at times, some of the bosses, they'll just focus on one or two. Mainly, uh, I, as, as, as I can see, many people will go for digital marketing. So when you talk about digital transformation, it's just only about marketing. But when they get a lot of uh, clients or they look at a lot of cases or businesses from the marketing, um, do they look into the digital transformation within the organization? How do they deliver their services or how do they deliver their products, right? So this is another aspect of the digital transformation I think is missed out greatly. That's a very good advice. Like I said, like, you know, throughout your entire presentation, you were highlighting things, which, you know, we just tend to miss out just because they're so simple and so straightforward. So thank you for that. Um, we currently don't have any questions for now. Let's see. So once again, you guys, if you have any questions for uh, Dr. Andy here regarding his presentation, once again, just leave them in the Q&A box. It's as simple as that. We'll give you maybe about another three to four minutes to do that before we move on to our next a presentation for today. So that's Andy, I know that you know this pandemic has been going on for quite some time already. So can you give us, you know, in hindsight, um, what we can expect from low and partners for let's say the next foreseeable one year or so? Because five years seems like a very long time to plan for. What can we expect from you guys for the next one year? Right. Um I think the uh, for this year, um, as I said, it's a good year for us, even though it's a pandemic. Uh, we took time to realign our strategies and our uh, work that we had done. 
So for example, in last year, um, after MCO, we actually started uh, two branches. One is in Seremban, sometime in May. Another one also in Johor, uh, South Kimi Valley, that also in May, that is after, you know, that's after the MCO. So this year, uh, 2021, we actually started uh, Cheras and also Ipo office. So, so our, um, for us, is uh, we see that there are increasing uh, number of inquiries in terms of employment issues, as well as the uh, dispute resolutions. Because when it comes to pandemic, I think a lot of people, they will have um, um, unresolved issues, lah, business issues uh, with their employees or with their suppliers or with their debtors. So in terms of the, uh, I, I feel that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs out there, they will need help. Lah. And, and, and we are glad and it's our direction to have uh, more branches uh, near to the place uh, of the, uh, you know, a nationwide presence with a nationwide presence to help the clients out there. Yeah. Sounds absolutely exciting. Now, a question just came in into our uh, Q&A box right here. Now, this one's from Kian. Kian, I love the fact that you're asking so many questions, especially yesterday and today. Keep that up. You guys, once again, if you have any questions, just, just shoot, basically. So the question is, uh, it's actually in two parts. He made a small correction here. So Kian's question is, Dato, uh, when will lawyer consultancy, uh, especially doing it online via Zoom, take place in Malaysia? Do you have any idea? Right. Um, I feel that there are... Um, okay, so your question is whether or not the legal consultancy legal consultancy can take place via Zoom, right? Is that yeah. the question? Yeah. yeah. In fact, uh, in our website, we allow the Zoom consultation already. Wow. <laughs> That's the <laughs> that we had uh, in the, uh, during the pandemic. So what this is what we did. Um, just, just to share what we have done uh, since it's asked. So I'm gonna share my screen right now. Mm -hmm. um, please. And see, can you see my screen? Not yet. Okay, there we go. Yeah, now right. we can. So if you can see that there is a e-meeting here in the ah. conference, right? So we specifically mentioned um, in view of the pandemic and also COVID-19, we allow and we encourage meeting through Zoom, uh, Skype and go to meeting, you know? So the payment can also be made online. Yeah, so, so this is one um, example and initiative that we've done last year uh, when there's a pandemic. So I, I feel that um, more, uh, the good thing about pandemic is that, you know, it teaches us, I mean, it teaches the public at large how to use Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not possible, you know, uh, you, if you speak to a client, they will definitely want to visit you physically. So then you have to take the, uh, you know, either the clients take the pain of the traffic jam to come to office or either you go out there uh, to meet the clients. But with this pandemic, uh, everyone knows how to attend a talk to Zoom. Like right now, we have 100 over participants or more than that. So, um, and also whenever there's a quick meeting, we, we can have a Zoom session just to, uh, just to have a consultation. So, so currently, um, our firm still practice, practice a Zoom meeting at large. A lot of clients actually contact us through Zoom. And just to also to share one of the internal functions that we have built, um, because uh, we you have there are so many of us so if let's say all my staff they will have a zoom account it'll be going to be a costly to the company as a whole as expenses so what we do is actually we also build an internal booking system for zoom account so different of them they can book differently you know so that we won't clash the usage of zoom so this is one example that you guys can do as well you can use google calendar and whatnot so to fully utilize the zoom account the paid zoom account that you had all right absolutely super another question that came in after that also kind of it's kind of similar so we'll actually skip that one Let's see what else you can ask. Let's do another one or two more. So this one comes from uh, Chin On Ong. So the question is, do you think the law industry will reduce paper usage uh, instead of, and, and use emails instead from like next year onwards? Sure. Um, I, think, I think the, uh, the initiatives from, um, apart from the uh, entrepreneur themselves or the lawyers themselves, uh, the court also did progress, uh, progress uh, during the MCO as well. Um, Last time, you know, back then when I st first started practice, uh, when we go to the court, right, you see piles of files, yes. piles of cases inside the court itself. And, and the court clerk will be pushing trolley by trolley. Uh, you know, when your case is being called or heard, then the court clerk will have to shift your file from the trolley to the judge's bench. This is how it works last time. And, and, and for all the lawyers, uh, you got to wait for your turn, right? So everyone have to, you know, you don't queue. You basically, uh, it's, it's a mess, lah. it's a mess. <laughs> so, so you see lawyers crowding like, you know, uh, dispatch boy lining up, you know, that kind of thing. So the good thing is that um, even in court, uh, there is a, I think there are more progress during MCO because it forces to digitalize it, 
right? It forces. So um, right now we have cures uh, to for e-filing. You know, even we go to the court, right? When we file documents, we're going to sue someone. We don't have to serve the paper to the. We don't have to file it into the court physically. What we do is that we have a token. All right, we can do e-filing. So in other words, our staff will have to scan, and then um, lodge it digitally to the court, and the right. court will certify it. Right. So all these are good process, and I think we are moving there soon. So eventually, um, it will become it, it's paperless in the court, uh, or it's soon to be paperless in the court. So then it goes back to the law firm themselves, how they want to manage their documentation flow. So how do you save the tree? How do you uh, manage your cloud system? Um, first question to your law firm yourself or your organization yourself, what is the cloud system they're using, right? So um, who is supposed, I think the painful part for a law firm or for any organization or professional firm is the scanning part. The scanning, you know, which everyone knows <laughs> you're paperless, but scanning is the painful thing to do, right? So who is the one who's scanning and then what software they use to scan? Uh, so these are part and parcel of the digitization process. Mm. Which is super intriguing to hear also because it's been a while since I've been to court and seen the whole process. Wait, that sounded a bit wrong. I've not actually been to court for you know a professional hearing. I've just been there to see what the situation is like. Let me just uh, put that out there first. <laughs> Neither people think I've like committed some crime or something. No, no, no. I was just there for educational purposes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yes, that's all the time we have for for the questions. Uh, they have suddenly come flooding in. So that's so if you do have some time after this, if you could kindly please answer those questions, you know, on our behalf. All you have to do is click on the Q and A and uh, type in your answers after that. That would be great. But for now, we actually have to wrap. Up this session and it's pretty fun talking to you as well because you know it's been a while like I said since I've been in touch with these kind of things and I'm pretty sure everybody else can appreciate it as well so you guys if you enjoyed this session let's give him a virtual round of applause thank you so much Dato, for your time here today with us at the SME Digital Fest 2020 thank you Laureen thank you all right you have a nice day now and uh, feel free to stay on with us we, uh, we'll be running until 5 30 so yes have a nice day thank you bye all right exabytes grow your business online